Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Chipperoo, everyone! Hi, friends. We are so glad you tuned in. This week's episode is going to um, tickle your pickle. Is what Max and I landed on. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of this. What I did, this was all Skylar's. Get your mind oh. out of the gutter. Biscuit is squeaking in the background. I like tickle your pickle because it sounds like something Gene would come up with. Okay, fair. All right, before we tickle your pickle, do you have any business for us? Yes, I do have a little business. We have a new Patreon subscriber and we have to burger pun their name. Love it. So thank you very much, Tanya Downing. Tanya, moving forward, you will be known as the Juan Tanya Cowning Burger. What's, oh, cow? Yeah, it's got some beef in it, believe it or not. It's a burger Ooh, like with beef. like beef wontons? Yeah. I don't, I don't oh. know what it is, but I love it. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. We're so excited to have you joining us over there. We hope you're enjoying all of those fun bonuses and you are enjoying our Discord community. If you'd like to have your name burger pond right here on the show, just go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. All right. I, I'm i feeling like I need some burger puns, Max. Okay. Well, they're not burger puns this week. Okay. But there are puns. In this edition of Bob Pun or Max Pun, we are doing Store Next Door. Fun. Are you ready for your first pun, Skylar? I am ready. A small price to pay. Discount hair pieces. To pay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, don't look at me like that. I do. You always say that. I don't know how I'm looking at you. <laughs> Bob's. Yes. Very good. Your next pun is tearing up my heart. Pacemaker surgery. Max. Yes. That was a good one. Your next pun is, let's talk about X, baby. Divorce canceling. (laughs) That's funny. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Just looking at you. Bob's. Yes. Oh, is she going to go 444? 444444? (laughs) Your final pun is, I know what you did last summer. Camp yearbooks. Max? Yes. <gasps> she did it. Confetti. When was the last time? Yes. There is. Bing, 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 bing. I'm just ready. What? Oh, you know, um, Kevin McAllister. <laughs> yeah. When he runs up to the camera. He's yeah. Like, ah! Right before he jumps on the bed with the popcorn. That's me. I'm just running around celebrating. Breaking the fourth wall there, buddy. Loved it. Love it. But Love it. You know, what's going on there? That's for another podcast. All right, Max. Are you ready for... Skylar sides the fun facts before the fun facts. Dish it, girl. Boy, do I have a fantastic side for you today. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. That was good. Thank you. That was just really good. Thank you. BuzzFeed News did a fantastic interview with the cast and crew in 2022. And there were a lot of really fun, interesting tidbits, but this was my absolute favorite. The cast was asked what their favorite song was, and it was a little from bit- From the show or just From the show, from oh. the show. It was <laughs> I'd be a, interested in both answers, to be honest. Oh, I, I just want to know everything yeah. about them. <laughs> oh, what's your favorite food? Lefty or righty. Um, Okay, so it was a little bit of a debate between electric love and pass the cranberry sauce. Now, that's not the fun fact, though. The fun fact is that John Roberts improvised the whole pass the cranberry sauce Thanksgiving song. Oh, I love it. Yeah. One of the most iconic songs in this TV show 
was improvised by none other than the iconic John Roberts. He's a pro. He's a pro, and he knows Linda's heart. He sure does. It's so weird and offbeat in just the the perfect way. It's a great song. Thank you for that beautiful improvisation, John Roberts. You have made it into our hearts, but mostly you've you're in our brains constantly because that song pops up every now and then, just in my brain for no oh, reason. Oh yeah, yeah, kill the turkey. Mm-hmm. All right, should we hop into this episode? We definitely should. Before we continue, we just wanted to take a quick moment to thank our official podcast sponsor, Carrie Neal. She is this month's podcast sponsor, and it is because of her that these next few episodes are being made. Thank you for helping us, Carrie. We appreciate it, Carrie. It means the world to us. Carrie signed up for our Basically Bob Belcher tier Carrie, your exclusive mug is on the way, and you know all the good other goodies you got coming to you, but we appreciate you supporting the show so much. This this helps us keep going. And if you, too, want to become an official sponsor of the podcast, just head over to our Patreon and check out our different tiers. Patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for Season 7, Episode 21 the season finale of season seven. You sure can. I'm confused about the finale part, but you're going to get into that um, in a second. Yeah, there's a little asterisk. There is. But let's let's dive into this. The title is Paraders of the Lost Float. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. There he goes. Da, 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 da. Teddy convinces Bob to join the Bog to Beach Parade in order to promote the restaurant and win a little easy cash. Of course, Jimmy Pesto gets in the way of winning the cash prize when he, too, decides to enter. Will Bob let it go, or will he ruin the beautiful day by trying to secure a win? This episode came out on May 21st, 2017. It was written by Stephen Davis. For the first time, Stephen Davis writing solo without Kelvin Yu. Whoa. Yeah. And directed by Bernard Derriman. I hope Kelvin um, was just like, I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to go to the Caribbean. and Yeah. He's like, you you got this. Yeah. Steven. I'm going to do my <laughs> thing. Um, keep the two of them in mind for uh, next week's episode. Just a okay. little, little teaser there. Uh, but let's talk about this season finale, quote unquote, asterisk Please situation. Explain. So this is technically the season finale. But the episode we're doing next week, Into the Mild, was kind of like tagged on the end of the season. It was kind of like in between season seven and season eight and is concluded in season seven, but was not technically the finale. They put like it it had something to do with like they needed a Bob's Burgers episode to lead into another show they were Fox was promoting and they needed like a solid show to kind of like lead into it, I think. Wow. Yeah. That is fascinating. So this was meant as the season finale. Even though we've got one more in season seven. I think that's really important to know because when you sit down on your couch on Hulu or Disney Plus or wherever you're watching it, you open it up and it does not look like the season finale. But as we both know, Bob's season finales are very particular episodes. They end on a specific note. So I think it's important to view this as a finale. And I know some of our favorite end credits come from season finales. So I got confused. Thank you for clearing that up because we're going to look at this differently now. Yeah. And you can tell by these two episodes back to back that this one is more like what they like in a finale where the family's all together and next Mm -hmm. week's episode separates them a little bit. Right. And remind us of some other season finales. Um, Glued Where's My Bob. That was a... Oh. Uh, The... The water balloon fight at Mr. Fish Odor's house. Yes. The... Wonder Wharf one where the they two-parter. were taken hostage, where Mr. Fish Odor and Bob were taken hostage. That one, yeah. Yeah. That they're, was, they're a little more epic. They absolutely are. And they they really, like you said, the family is going to be together, like, in a big way. The family or the town. Yeah, lots of characters are typically in the finale. Yes. And I just want to remind you that I think the end credits to Glued Where's My Bob made me cry. So... Oh, yeah. Isn't that where the whole town the is whole there? The whole town comes in and Bob's holding Louise. It's so cute when they're singing together. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's a good one. So 
I'm just saying, season seven. You, you got, got you got some uh, big shoes to fill. Yeah, you got to try and live up to that. But we'll get to those end credits. Uh, let's talk about this episode. Let's talk about this title real quick. Obviously, with the mu- this theme song I was singing, "Paraders of the Lost Float," is a play on Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the script cover was a play on Raiders of the Lost Ark as well. Tell me how you feel about this episode overall. Tell me what you liked about it. You know, what we do on this podcast. What, what we do. Yeah. Um, I I liked this episode a lot. Not my favorite season finale. Probably because glued, glued Where's My Bob is, like, amazing. and um, But you've heard us talk about that episode. I love the lesson Bob learns. He finally has to, like, let go of this, like, winning energy. And by letting go and embracing this beautiful, quirky parade, he – everybody comes up on the parade float and starts dancing with him. And he wins through being more authentic to himself. So, great lesson. I adore the family in the pickle costumes. I do, too. And I think it's pretty iconic memory is that – image of all of them in the pickle costumes yes. with Gene in his beef squash costume. Um, which, by the way, when did he get his beef squash m- mask back? Because if you remember in beef squash, <gasps> he gave it back to Peter Pescadero, I think, is who he taught to like pop and lock for the, the love... mask. But he gave it back to him. So I'm curious, just what? Oh, when did he get it back? He doesn't mention it in this episode. I, he doesn't mention in this episode, but I could see that happening off screen, him being like, Peter... Yeah, teaching him one of his new hobbies that he's picked up. Yeah. Gene. I yeah. just, I don't know that Peter Pescadero has the most um, forceful, he he couldn't stand up to Gene. Like, I'm not giving you the mask, my yeah. principal. I'm not giving you the mask. I digress, but this episode, anytime we get to see Bob dance around his underwear is a good time. Oh, I forgot he took his clothes off, which he didn't need to at all, but it lit up my heart. I was like, yeah. You do you, Bob. Get those tidy whities out. This is also just in one story, right? There's just a story. Yeah, I was thinking about this. It's been a, a few weeks since we watched this episode. But I guess I would say the parade is the A story. Jimmy Pesto is the B story, even though it's really related to the A story. And then maybe Tina and Jimmy's fighting jimmy listens to his dad and tries to sabotage bob's float and then they have this great moment where it's like why are we doing this why are we living our parents story so maybe that could be the runner i'm not sure yeah i mean i think it's more like i'm I'm thinking more that that all has to do with the parade and on the float and stuff like that we're not like this is happening here and these kids are off at wagstaff or something you know and i feel like most of the finales tend to focus on one story mostly. Definitely. I think there are stories within the stories. Like I, I do think there's classic structure here, but it's a finale. So we're going to do a, a, a big family in, episode. In one of our um, mailbag episodes over on Patreon, someone asked us like what Bob's Burgers episodes would make good movies. Like oh, Bob's that Burgers was a movies. Great question. And I feel like a lot of the finales I think we said Glued Words My Bob is one of them and but like a lot of the finales are kind of like one big story and you could extend them maybe. So Yeah, that's a really good way to put that. It's it's true. And there's sometimes detective stuff, there's like classic enemies you know, Jimmy Pesto's the enemy or Mr. Fish Odor's the enemy kind of thing. I was thinking about this the other day after we recorded, and I still think I want a movie. And I'm trying to think what, like, 90s movie this parallels. I still want a movie where Bob gets his fancy chef dream and just becomes this, like, unhappy, like, overstressed chef but he has all the critical acclaim but he's like who have i become and he has to work his way back to his family i think that movie is called the menu which (laughs) no no spoilers for anyone but if you've seen that you will understand (laughs) no (laughs) a fun fact about this season finale is that this is the first season finale to have the opening credit sequence since season three Typically, they need that, like we said, like they need that extra runtime so they just cut the opening credits, but this one has it. 
I don't think this season finale is as good as the other season finales, and I don't think it's as grand. And now that you're like, they didn't even take the extra time, I'm like, was were they just trying to get this episode out? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't want to, like, speculate. This is also the first episode Jean has worn the burger costume within the episode, not, not in, in the, the end credits. Since Itty Bitty Diddy Committee. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, again, we get our facts from fandom, which is a wiki, and, you know, sometimes like, you gotta take again, it with a grain of salt, but... <laughs> we are not reliable on this podcast. That's not true. What I what I mean is I did not go back and reference every single episode to make sure that that was <laughs> certain, but yes. I, I, I have faith in the diehards of the internet, people on the internet... I feel ya. Gotta say, I'm a rain girl. I love that there's rain in this episode. I love seeing the moody sky. I think we see my beloved rain jackets that the kids wear, I believe. Just my favorite thing ever. Yeah, you do love those uh, Belcher kids in their little rain and winter attire. The slickers. Yeah. When Jimmy gets to hop on the float and gets to be like, don't tell me not to dance, Dad. He doesn't say that line, but it's a, it. he dances that line. Love it so much. Gretchen, Gretchen's outfit is amazing. I'm not a huge Gretchen fan like some people are, but she, it, this is a perfect episode for her. Yeah, she would 100% be excited about this kind of parade, which, by the way, Bog to Beach I'm pretty sure, you know, we've talked about how Lauren Bouchard was in San Francisco, and that's kind of where, like, the Bob's buildings are inspired mm-hmm. by and, you know, and the restaurant and stuff. Um, up in San Francisco, they have something called the Beta Breakers, which oh. is this big, yeah, this, it's like the, I think it's like the biggest foot race or longest foot race or something like that. And what it has become over the years, it's just like, it's people just like in all sorts of weird costumes getting drunk and making that, you know, going from this, like from the bay to the beach or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so I funny. Assume that's exactly what this is supposed to be. That's amazing. It it has to be. Yeah. When you said it was a race, I, I was like thinking, you know, Boston Marathon. No, I think it's like, it started off kind of as an actual race. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh-huh. And then it became what it was, which is kind of this is like this parade celebration, like Everyone just partying, drinking, and having fun, and that's very San wearing Francisco. costumes. Yeah, I love it. I love how Lauren Bouchard brings his life into this show. Yeah, so much. I do too. Big question for you: You're the judge of the parade. Okay. Cold pizza. Cold mini burger slider. I mean. Look, I don't want to side with Jimmy Pesto, but I do think pizza is better cold than burgers are better cold. Yes. Or than burgers are. And you might not necessarily know that Jimmy's pizza sucks. Yeah. It's hard to make bad pizza. We have had some, but it really like, you really got to mess up to make bad pizza. Bad pizza is still good pizza. Yes. I'm trying to think if I've had pizza that was been like inedible and I don't think so. I think I have some, had it. We got some at a place here that we won't mention near us one time when we were like, this is what? Are you kidding me? Well, it I think it was good. just, it was fine. It was still good because it was pizza, but it was so expensive. It was so hyped up. Their menu was like so exciting, so gimmicky. I like the toppings weren't cooked well enough. Oh, I enough. hate that. Yeah. That's, that's what I, I don't understand people who want mushrooms on their pizza. I love mushrooms. I love the idea of mushrooms on my pizza, but sometimes they don't cook. They're just like styrofoam, like, hi. Yeah, I've never been a big mushrooms on pizza person. What's your perfect pizza? That's a good question. I think I just like a simple, like, margarita or, Mm. like, pepperoni, which is, like, traditional pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love onions on pizza. Mmm. Yum. I think you inspired me to get it once and there when you get those white onions they're like sweet and yeah it's they're nice. sweet and they're cooked so it's not like it's like a strong raw flavor it's yeah it's really good you like crispy pepperonis that's what I know about you yeah I need the like li- I need them like the little edges to fold up a little bit and the edges mm-hmm. to be crispy I used to just eat pepperoni from the packet when <sighs> I was a kid pepperoni so good it's so good wow um, what okay 
Sorry, this, Bob. This is important information. Oh, yeah, but sorry, Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. Um, we weren't talking about Jimmy Pesto's pizza there. I just want you to know. And it was Bob's idea in the first place to bring bribery snacks. So Bob gets all the credit. That being said, I would still eat those delicious cold sliders. I think we would taste the pizza and be like, no. And then we'd go get all the sliders. Eat a slider in one hand. Uh, I... J- I will take, if that's my one chance to try one of Bob's burgers, I'll do it. I would just, I would like stuff them in my bra, stuff them in my pockets. I would, I would love to try a bra, Bob's burger. A bra full of sliders. Bring it home. I feel like Linda's had to do this at some point, or Jean has taken one of Linda's, like it feels familiar to me. Jean stealing one of Linda's bra so that he could back a bunch of sliders in there. <laughs> I love it already. There's an episode for a, you. A burger bra. Yeah. Should we get in these end credits? Anything you want to say about the episode before we get into the end credits? We should get into the end credits. Last thing, uh, Louise with a shirt gun. Oh, yes. The shirt guns are amazing. Fantastic. Yes. So funny. I love whenever they're shooting people with them, and it's always like, just like an oof. You know? Like, <laughs> it, it's like forceful enough to make you kind of like, oh. Yeah. But not it wouldn't anything be fun. that would hurt you. Right. Yeah. Um, so good. Man, have you ever shot a t-shirt gun? I would love to shoot a t-shirt gun. I absolutely have not. They seem so fun. Yeah. My neighbor had a potato gun when I was growing up. I think I had one of those at some point. You had a potato gun yeah. and you've never told me? Yeah. I, I, it's every but they kid like, gets those at some point. Do they, Max? Uh, I guess not. My neighbor built, they built theirs. I had a marshmallow gun too. That was fun. What? Yes. Wait, that has to be a Louise plot where she has a marshmallow gun and she's just shooting her hot chocolate. Oh my God. Uh, Jean would just be jumping around, catching those things in murder. 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 (laughs) Murder. Okay. Well, now I'm getting hungry for all sorts of things. So should we get into these end credits? Let's do it. Okay. The final moment is everyone is dancing. Bob. Finds out that uh, they won fifth place, which they're very excited about. And Jimmy Pesto and Trev are kind of like commenting on what's going on. Okay. And then we'll get into these end credits. The The pickle costumes are now soaked. That oh, was a right. great line when she's like, I think it's Tina who's like, these costumes are like sponges. She's like, I made them from sponges. Yeah. <laughs> what? We were robbed. I don't know, man. That was amazing. They came across the line and people started dancing. It felt bigger than all of this. How would you just <laughs> shut up? All right. Mwah. So I, uh, I wonder what it's going to cost to fix this float up, huh? Bob, it's not going to be cheap. Don't ruin the daddy. Hot pants, rain dance. Get out there and take a chance. I love that Gene is the one to say, like, don't ruin this teddy. Yes. I love it, too. Teddy's great in this episode. Teddy's really good in this episode. Um, I like that we have a Trev moment at the end because I don't know why I cannot let go of this. I want Trev and Ron to be together so badly. I think that was like really deep what he said. Yeah, they're both paired with these kind of idiots. Yeah. And they're such better people and calmer and yeah. Yes. I, I wish them to, whether they date or just have a friendship, I just wish them to find each other yes. and enjoy each other's company. And they can complain about their stupid coworkers that they have Bosses. to hang around with. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Loved that moment. So then that music takes us into the end credits. And it kind of starts with a close up of the float that got like the sign, the Bosberger sign ripped. Thanks to Jimmy Pesto. Before we get into the end credits, will you remind us where this song come from, comes from? You remind us because I can't remember. <laughs> okay, so um, there, Jean, of course, has the best line. Linda really wants to play this disco music on the float. This is like her brilliant idea. And she's like, it's the most amazing disco song about rain. And Jean is like, um, hello, it's raining men. And she's like, okay, fine, number two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's such a good line. Yeah, so we get this hot pants rain dance song playing. I'm already and- dancing. These end credits, it's going to be a series of just all these people who are at the parade dancing on a white background, they're in color, to this song. We start off with Bob and Linda. 
It's a full body shot of Bob and Linda. Bob is in his underwear and Linda is in her pickle costume. This image? Yeah. Perfection. Yes, I agree. And it's then it's followed by a quick shot of the three kids. Louise and Tina are in their pickle costumes. Gene's in his burger costume. Uh, Gene and Tina are kind of like in the forefront and Louise is in the background. They're dancing. Louise's dance moves throughout this episode, I believe, but here are just so good. I'm like, you get it, girl. She has some really good dance moves throughout the series. Agreed. Especially then the movie with that Lucky Ducks move that she does during her Lucky Ducks song. I kind of have memorized the choreography because I, why am I like this? But I think we've said it before, but Tina is old enough to be way too aware of herself but Louise, when she dances, isn't. Yeah. So she's still got that unbridled dancing thing that you do as a kid. And it shows. It shows. Talking about the movie and how we're like comparing season finales to like movie length stuff. This is a similar end credit sequence to the movie end credit sequence where it's just characters Ooh. dancing on the screen. We still haven't done the movie end credits. That's on this true. Week. Maybe we should do them in between season seven and season eight. Yeah, we are coming up to the end of season seven, as we said. And Skylar and I like to take little little short hiatuses in between seasons. We'll put a poll so up on we'll Instagram. Go yeah. follow us there. And, and you can tell us if you want us to move directly on to season eight or take a break for the movie end credits. Perfect. Dance, rain, dance, get out there and shake your pants. In that like little stretch, we get a close-up of Teddy dancing, followed by Marshmallow and Gretchen together. Marshmallow's outfit, too, is just... Take me to Vegas and let me be a showgirl, baby. It's incredible. I'm glad that Teddy gets to dance a little bit because he was stressing. Yeah. Yeah, and he gets his own... He gets his solo moment in these end credits. I don't think we'll have to see if anyone else gets to dance solo. So we're seeing a lot of the characters that we've seen in this episode dancing. There was three people in the crowd dancing, um, three people from the crowd dancing in the credits together. One was holding a Jimmy Pesto pizza slice. I love that detail. Yeah. And then it, were, it's, it was followed by Jimmy Pesto and Jimmy Jr. And Jimmy Pesto standing there with his arms crossed while Jimmy Jr. is just doing his thing. He does not care. Good for you, Jimmy Jr., Jeju. Would you like a moment of redemption for Jimmy Pesto here? Like a, a foot tap or... No, I don't... We love I, to hate him. I don't need it. Okay. I don't need He's it. He's like, you're dead to me. Yeah. Then we get more of the people who were in the crowd... Followed by a close-up of Speedo Guy. I think it's Speedo Guy. That's Speedo right? Guy? I, I was like, so. is that Courtney? <laughs> it like looks Courtney like Speedo it. Guy to me. Yeah. In goggles. Like ski, like ski goggles. goggles. Where you can see a reflection and he is watching the parade and it's the Belcher float going by. It is. Look at those little pickles up there. Yeah, and Bob in his underwear and they're dancing. Okay, so we get a few more of these random people from the parade, and then we get another great moment with the kids dancing, where now Louise is in the foreground, and Jean and Tina are behind them, and it's just more of these great dance moves from Louise that we were talking about, followed by the guy who was walking all those dogs. And all tangled up. All tangled up, got in front of the floats, and still having issues with all those dogs in the it end credits. It was his first day. Yeah. Is still, it's still his first day, clearly. So we get a couple more shots of just like some randoms, and then we get this big group shot of the parade with the Belchers in the front. It is like, this is our town, baby. Yeah. Everyone's dancing. The guy on the stilts is in the background. That looks like Where's Waldo? Yeah, kind yeah. of. Uh, found him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't that funny. It was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> and followed by... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Still laughing. Still laughing. It's not that funny. It was. What is the last thing we see before the end Oh, credits? we see... 
Sorry, I got coffee dizzy after laughing so hard. We see Mr. Fish Odor on his iconic go-kart, popping champagne, driving left to right, which at first I didn't know if I liked because I was like, you really weren't part of this episode, but now knowing that it's a season finale, he is kind of the mayor of the town in a weird, capitalistic way. The mayor. Hi, the- mayor. <laughs> Oh, we forgot to talk about it. I have this theory that one of our fans shared with us that the mayor is actually a dog. And on our Patreon, we have a whole episode going scene by scene where I try and prove that the mayor is actually a dog. And we didn't incorporate this this one from this episode where Mayor Spot, where Linda spots the dog. Where Linda spots the mayor, but I think it adds proof to our theory. So if you want to go listen to that episode, subscribe to our Patreon. I promise it's not a plug for our Patreon. I just really It has to do with what we're... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Fish odor at the end. It's great. I love me some fish odor, even though he was barely in the episode. The highlights, lowlights. The song is great. The song you, is fantastic. It does what Bob's loves to do, which leaves you dancing and feeling good mm-hmm. at the end of an episode. Bollywood effect. Yep. It leaves you sad that there's going to be a break in between seasons if you were watching this live, which I think works well. Yeah. That's why it's so weird that there's another episode that we're going to get into right I after know. this. It'll be weird to like cover it a week after because this it had like a little gap in between episodes like yeah. we said earlier. But yeah, it's a good... It's. Uh, you know, it's it it's fun, it's happy, it's people in the town and the Belchers dancing around. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like it, it also speaks to the weirdness of these characters and this town and this family, which is what makes this show work. One of the reasons. Do you want the lyrics of Hot Pants Rain Dance real Why quick? Why not? It, there's a longer version of the song, but in this end credits, it's just Hot Pants Rain Dance. Get out there and take a chance. Hot Pants Rain Dance. Get out there and shake your pants. It's Bob's lesson. Mm-hmm. The music is tied to Bob's character arc. Should we score him? Yeah. We score on a scale of 1 to 10 H's at the end of Tina's uh. uh. Why don't you go first, Max? Okay. I am going to give these a 7.5 H's. I'll give them an 8. Okay. I Like I said, I love the music. I love the happiness of it. I love seeing all these characters dance around. But as we were saying, for a season finale and comparing it to something like The Glued Where's My Bob end credits, which was obviously a 10. The water balloon credits. Yeah, it's just not quite there for me. Agreed. The only reason why I'm above you a little bit is the belchers and the pickle costumes just tickle me. They tickle my pickle. What can I say? Wow, bring it all around. There we are, Max. Back to the beginning. Those are the end credits to Paraders of the Lost Float. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Go ahead and follow us on social media, Bob's Credits, wherever you go online these days. Who knows? Who knows? Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Um, stay. I don't know. I don't know. How how am I ending a season finale like this? I'll just say stay weird, y'all. I like stay weird. It's a, it's a. <laughs> we're, we're both really on today. It's, it's a good thing to tell people to do. It is. Weird is where it's at. Weird is where it's at. I love it.